You know those eerie feelings you get when you're playing a multiplayer game and there's absolutely no one on the server apart from you? For instance, boot up Minecraft right now and scope around for some deserted server that happens to be running but has absolutely no one on it. Feels pretty weird, right? Well, that's my hobby, going around on those barely running games and seeing what people had left behind. And not just Minecraft either, Counter-Strike, Team Fortress 2, World of Warcraft, I used to go on all those games and explore those very special servers nearly every single day. I logged down what was on them, buildings, maps, announcements, and then my friend would come along, wipe, and then build what I had logged in. I would get paid around, say, $50 for every server I cleared, depending on the size. So anyway, I, I'm sipping there on my coke when my unnamed friends, I, I can't exactly tell you what his name is due to security reasons, rings me up over Steam and says that there is some really big indie game map that was just abandoned, and he wanted me to go check it out. He also mentioned that the map was larger than normal, so he would pay me around, say, a hundred big dollars. For me, having no job and something like that was... <laughs> amazing! And so I accepted. When I went to go download the client, it was on some old website, the design was pretty poor, didn't look very popular, so I speculated they just wanted me to see if it was working. So I created an account and booted up the game. It looked normal a lot, enough. It was kind of like Second Life. That game where you play as yourself and then run around and buy and build shit. So I started at the server maintenance screen and went over to some of the hosting stats. I found that the server was being ran from a single tower that had a proxy. I couldn't list the location to get a proper ping to report to my friend, but since he was probably going to delete it, I guess I would just make it up. So I scanned over to the other active servers and it seemed like the only active one was this one. He was probably going to wipe it and demolish it, then comply the project, so I guess that's why I was getting such a big bonus for it. I don't know, everything seemed a bit off and odd. I logged onto the server and then the loading screen came up. Hints, a bar, some pictures of people playing, the usual. After the screen completed, my avatar was dropped into a little forest that I would assume be outside my main city or town. So I walked forward, hoping to find some sort of tutorial that would guide me around. but. Nothing happens. Uh, the graphics were quite advanced for a game of, you know, of its age. Like the forest spanned for ages and the trees looked like the Elwyn forest from WoW. I told all of you this, I, I told all of this to my friend as we kept the channel open for fast information. After walking around in the forest for about 20 minutes, I came to a bigger than normal tree. It had this big door on the front, it looked as if it had been carved into the wood by hand. Um, if you've seen the movie Nightmare Before Christmas, or even the Nostalgia Critic Halloween specials, you would know what I'm talking about. Those weird carvings that you'd see in that kind of film. But, anyway, this cursor came up and with an interaction symbol, and then the screen went black. My voice channel cut out, and there was no loading screen, only the sounds of the poorly looped 8-bit music that was on the last loading screen played. So, I assumed it was loading, just in the background. Maybe it caused my computer to glitch. I have no clue. So I simply waited, not wanting to tab out or delete it. So, and I kept on waiting. Eventually, after about 15 minutes of waiting, it finally comes back. in with my voice channel. The entire thing was just a big mirror. I mean, like, seriously, it was just a giant mirror in the middle of the tree, separating the middle of the tree from the other half. My character walks up to the tree without my control and puts his hands towards the reflection. After this, I was suddenly brought to my desktop. Along with the icon, all of the game files seemed to be missing too. The HTTP also seemed to vanish along with it. I asked my friend if he cut the server, however, he replies with a simple and innocent, uh, no dude. Anyways, he transfers the money to my PayPal and simply logs out for the night. After being around 1 a.m., I started thinking about sleep too, and when I finally logged off the computer and went to go lie down in my bed, I couldn't stop thinking about how I'd spend my $100, Assassin's Creed, you know, something like that, maybe Watch Dogs, and pretty soon I drifted to sleep. However, that didn't last. 
I woke up around six times that night, always seeing that goddamn tree. Now, it's not even scary or anything like that, it was just annoying. It's a vividly recreated mirror that inside of my mind, and every time I would fall back asleep, I would continue doing it, getting slightly more realistic every time I passed out, the mirror becoming more textured, less polygon-like, the tree becoming like an actual tree. And I, I don't know why, but every time I went back to bed, I would go out and try to touch it. And then as soon as I tried to touch it, I'd wake up. Getting up again around 6 a.m. and being unable to sleep, I decided to hop on the computer for the goddamn weekend and rummage around on Steam for any good sales. I got about halfway through watching some Saints Row 3 trailer when I was invited to play some Counter-Strike Source. The name was... some guy was added to my friends list who I didn't recognize at all. The name was kind of resembling my name as well, just some letters and numbers off. And it kept on flashing for a couple minutes. And after freaking some debate, I actually decided to oblige. The server was pretty normal, just a dust two, dust underscore two with no announcements, me and him on opposite teams. It must have been a peer-to-peer -peer server because the name was the exact same as mine. I bet my friend was pulling a prank or something. After I went through the options I, to get my game set, I decided to buy an AWP and shoot this guy up with. And, but whenever I tried to press the um, fire key I had binded to, the game would freeze and go back to normal after about two seconds. Well, that was kind of odd. Uh, like, I don't know how to explain this to you. If you had a semi-automatic firing weapon and then every time you clicked, instead of it shooting a bullet, the game froze. Or... It wasn't really like a freeze, in fact. It was more like a lag or some type of drop in frame rate. Whatever. I simply decided that it was some buggy server coding and decided to continue playing at the game with a trusty old Glock. After I ran out of spawn, I could hear a fair laugh or giggle from the other side of the map. I brushed it off as some side of sort of script plugin and kept on running around looking for this damn guy. And after about 10 minutes, I was about to leave considering apparently he wasn't ready to play ball. But right then, right before I'm about to click off or alt tab or whatever, out of the corner of my eye, I see him running under a walkway. I followed him under, but when I re-emerged on the other side, it wasn't the other side of the map I saw, but, but I was inside of that big tree with a large mirror that stretched across my screen. The reflection was not of a terrorist I was playing as, but of me sitting there at my keyboard. I threw my headset off and checked my webcam, but the light that it would have indicated that I was turned on was not. What the hell is this? In my reflection, my hand extends from the mouse and then... In my reflection, my hand extends from my mouse and begins cutting into its arm with his nails, smiling the entire time, cackling like some crazy madman. The cut started appearing on my arms as he giggles as he does so. I started to scream and started trying to turn off the computer before it fading to black. My face flushed on the screen and then it looked distorted and rotted. <sighs> I waited about four days before turning the damn thing back on. I need to do this, I tell myself. It's for work. I turned my computer back on and started the world. The program immediately shuts down and starts booting up Battlefield 3. What the fuck? I said aloud. I wasn't using Battlelog. This is way too suspicious. I'm about to turn my computer off in fear of seeing my doppelganger again, but I start and start going all cutty cutty, but I see I was invited by my old friend. The server looks pretty normal, just a squad on DM on the Caspian border. I, I spawned and selected my weapons, and thinking that I just need something to get my sanity back, I started trying to chat my friend, but when I opened a tab, the only thing I could hear was static. Uh, hello? Man, you there? I say it on my microphone, however, I was only, well, replied in with static. Okay, dude, come on, don't be a dick, let's go, come on! I said in hopes of getting a fucking response. <sighs> Fucking mic problems. Whatever, dude, let's just play. I, I started to run around a map, and I was looking for my friend amongst the bushes and trees I was lining around the gas station. I, I see a model run behind a building, and it didn't look like a silhouette or a normal model in the game. I remember dust too and decided to turn the computer off. I reached up for the power and pressed it once to look back at my screen, and all I could see was... <sighs> look, all I could see was... I could see was is that 
all the trees and now some bear and the same door. Oh shit! I say as I struggle to look away, the power would have turned off and my character was un unattended towards that large tree. The door opens and I gu guess who's standing there in a the mirror? Staying there looking exactly like me. It was my doppelganger that stares blankly into the screen with a fucking lazy eye looking off into the corner. He changed since the last time I saw him. His eyes look sunken in. His bones are clearly visible and a fleshy carcass is creases in his face. He grimaces as he starts jabbing himself up a piece of wood. Ah! I screamed and his actions as his axes replicated on my body. I look, re looked and reached for the cord but I couldn't find it. It kept on slipping out of my freaking hands. I could feel the freaking wood splinters cutting into my chest and appearing there. I finally gasped and pulled the cord out. And the laughing and the screaming died down. Ah, oh, fuck. And the, it also ended the voice channel. Uh, my mom heard me screaming and I was rushed to the hospital and from that point on I received 60 stitches for my cuts and gashes. Uh, I sold my computer after I returned home and a couple days had passed and things are looking down for me. I lost my job after having too many days off and still thinking about that train doppelganger I begun walking around the interior of my house thinking about what I could do about the mirrors. Every time I looked into a real life mirror of my own house. I always got this feeling that there was someone else behind there watching me, brushing, brushing my teeth, uh, taking a shower, anything that would require me to use it, and even other bodily movements. I, I, I just felt nervous every time I was in front of one, and even I personally actually think I saw my actual reflection move or do something that I didn't command it to do. Every time I would close my eyes, I would see that rotting and fleshy face. The mirrors are driving me to insanity. I need to think about how I could overcome this fucking bastard. Then it clicks. The mirrors and the trees. I need to get back to the game. Knowing the HTTP, HTTP is down, I realized that I needed to host it. I decided to buy a Hel Dell computer from my local store and set up a peer-to-peer -peer connection in the hopes that I can see this bastard in once again. The server pings online and as I enter, and and I begun to enter what I remembered of the host, hashes and strings of code from my residual file that I can find. After working for about three days, I finally got the server back online. The web address started to work, and I started to brace myself as I clicked log in. The page looks different. It had pictures of me losing my job, as well as loved ones crying and people being killed, beheadings, torture, cannibalism, decapitation light in my screen. As the game played, the same hollowing noise when I first met this doppelganger begun playing as well. I logged in, the loading page going black once more. I was dropped into the forest, but again this one was different. Gore and blood splattered the entire landscape, bodies hung from the branches, and... It didn't look like a game, it looked much, much more realistic. <sighs> this is hard to explain, um, think about Google Maps, right? However, instead of it being like, you know, like you walking around and clicking to where you wanted to go, you were, you're at, you were an avatar walking around in the actual streets. It's very odd to say the least. <sighs> they follow me with their black, cold eyes, with my character progressing through the landscape. And as I progress through the landscape in real life, I'm shaking. The barriers of the game and reality slowly drift apart as I advance deeper and deeper into the forest. And eventually, I'm walking on my own. No keyboard, no mouse. This is me in real life, physically walking. I continue to walk over corpses, getting blood and other nasty shit all over myself. I have to do this. I have to do this. I keep on saying myself. I just fucking have to. <laughs> Until I finally come to a tree. The tree. I brace myself and I walk towards the main door, screaming, it's still ringing in my ears. It slows down to mere giggles as I walk towards the mirror. I can see myself covered in blood and... I can also see elongated features, black eyes staring back at me. It starts rasping and crawling towards me, breaking the mirror as it did. Now, this is the time. I pulled out my pocket mirror with all my strength and showed it to the doppelganger. I heard a massive burst of screaming echoes, making my eardrums bleed as I held the mirror with all my willpower. Suddenly, I woke into my room. On the floor, covered in blood, with the mirror laying to my left. <sighs> it's over. 
I whispered to myself. I got up and collected myself, took a quick shower, and got a glass of water. I got in my car and I drove as fast as I could to the nearest bridge over that had water. I got the mirror and threw it down into the water and begun walking home. Safe. And a hero after defeating the doppelganger. And that's why I'm writing this now, to save you the trouble of all this. Be cautious whenever you join any type of empty or abandoned server. You might just hear laughs, giggles, echoes that was created by your mind or by something more evil. And if you ever encounter your own doppelganger, I fear for the worst for you. After a couple of months, I, police started... Police dredged lakes around the country, finding, finding mirrors exactly like the one I, I used to defeat him for the first time. And I have a hunch that he won't make the same mistake again. <sighs> Alright, so after much, much requests, I guess I'm going to have to give my opinion on the story. Now, normally, I wouldn't do this story because, personally, I cannot say I liked it. There was a few underlying issues that I had with the story. Realistic blood, there was some poorly written things, the way it's written in the first person, and then sometimes switches the third person. I actually had to edit some of it so it would sound pretty decent, not like I sold, I sell my computer, you know, stuff like that. God, there were some major grammar issues, and to be honest, I can't say I like the story. Now, at first, with this abandoned server thing, it feels like it has a pretty nice and unique setup that you get to see and hopefully experience. Like, again, going on an empty server or a creepy thing like that, that's actually pretty creepy. I've been on one myself. And then hearing things and doing stuff like that, yeah, that might be fine, but they're, they didn't really build up or flesh out this world very much. And to be honest, it didn't seem like the kid did much work to earn that $100. Was a friend in on it? I have no idea, and to be honest, it doesn't really make any sense from that standpoint. Um, again, I don't understand the kid's motivations, why he would get back on the computer. I added actually all that stuff of him seeing shit in the mirror because without that, again, the story wouldn't make any sense. Ooh, the fucking gore and that type of thing was very cliche and to be honest even though the premise of this story is very original and unique and has some very good potential the person screwed it up by throwing a lot of cliches and such like that in there i couldn't find the author's name on it however overall the story is all right i guess if you enjoy it um let me know if you enjoy this kind of commentary, uh, this kind of thing like this. I wouldn't classify this as a shit pasta, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> um, understand that my Patreon link will be in the description to download to the video. If you donate a dollar, that will be also on the Patreon before I upload it to YouTube and all that fun shit. Also, my artist does commissions. Link in the description below. Have a good one.